So uh, I've been tinkering with, uh, yes, as Kevin mentioned, uh, variants of, of uh, color forth. And um, uh, unfortunately, as a, a disclaimer, of course, uh, I don't have huge deep experience with forth, but I, um, and, uh, but I, you know, this is, this is sort of my first exploration in this area. So anyhow, um, so overview, I'm going to just briefly describe uh, the, the color forth dialect and then talk about what I've done with rainbow forth and um, talk about uh, sort of my latest incarnation of my uh, implementation of it. Uh, talk about web apps and JavaScript and App Engine and a bunch of stuff. So, all right. So, Color Forth is is this neat variant on Forth that uh, Chuck came up with, came, uh, yeah, came up about with in about 2000, I gather. Uh, it uses Color to simplify the the, the interpreter, and uh, it's uh, sort of a back to basics uh, take on Forth. It's uh, it's neat. You've got uh, and it, you, you've got, uh, uh, you substitute color for syntax, so a lot of the line noise kind of fades out, and, and you can you could just uh, see the words for what they are. Um, what do the colors mean? You've got red to define a word, you've got yellow to execute a word, green to compile it into the dictionary, um, you've got cyan to compile it even if it's a macro. Uh, in, in my dialects, I've used blue to, uh, to uh, sort of like tick to, to get the address of a word. Chuck, I understand, uses it for something else. Uh, magenta for a variable and white for comments. It's great to use the color because it simplifies the interpreter quite a bit. It's a whole lot easier to implement uh, color forth uh, in, in a lot of instances, at least as far as I've found, than, uh, than ordinary forth. Uh, this is sort of loosely the correspondence of the colors uh, with conventional forth. So, uh, for those of you who happened to catch my, my talk uh, by, back in January, I guess, um, my, my first crack at this was a, uh, was a native fourth for, for x86. I, um, uh, I sort of uh, I cheated a little bit, bootstrapped things from C, um, and uh, I cheated on the editor uh, that, was, that was implemented in C. But the, uh, the core interpreter was, uh, w was all uh, native x86 code. Um, I tried to hook things in so you could do some syscalls on Windows and Linux. Um, there, were, there were about 23 blocks for the core system and eight blocks to, to, uh, to put up some colored boxes in, uh, on Linux, um, subroutine threaded. Uh, been busy with things, but I decided to have a, have a start from scratch. Uh, and this time I decided to, to try to implement things as a, uh, as a web app. Uh, I, since I uh, started working for Google, so I, I felt uh, motivated to, to do something online. So um, I wanted to be able to make it work on a web page. Um, it rather perversely implemented on, on top of JavaScript with Ajax, which does dreadful, dreadful things for performance, but uh, what can you do? Um, I uh, wanted to be able to store the state on a server uh, to be able to allow online collaboration and um, do it as a web, as a web application. I've used a, uh, a thing called App Engine, uh, which I'll talk about later, to, for storage. Uh, and this time, since last time I cheated on the editor, this time I figured I should at least do the editor and forth. Uh, and, but unfortunately, due to, um, due to the need to, to uh, bootstrap things on top of JavaScript, there was a lot more of the core interpreter ended up uh, being sort of artificial and, and, and uh, done directly in JavaScript. It's, it's sort of still subroutine threaded, but I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit. Um, so what's a web application? Um, the idea that you could use the brow browser as a thin client. For instance, I'm doing the presentation actually in, uh, in uh, Rainbow Forth here. I was able to use it to, to put my slides just on a, on a series of blocks. Um, it's so you can use the uh, you can you can use the browser to as your uh, access to it. You can use it from anywhere. You keep your data out in the cloud, so you don't have to 